Okay. Okay, are we ready? No. No. <laughs> All your noise has already been heard. All your noise has already been heard. We are live this morning. Okay, good morning, folks. This is Jake Kleochko. It's already Wednesday today in the Kleochko household. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. And so we shall begin with our uh, uh, gospel commentary for this morning. Okay, this morning's gospel comes from St. Matthew still, chapter 23, verses 27 to 32. Okay, what does Jesus tell us today? He continues to berate and scold the, uh, the Pharisees. Yeah. So he says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead men's bones and every kind of filth. Yeah. Even so, on the outside, you appear righteous, but inside you are filled with hypocrisy and evil doing. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build tombs of the prophets and adorn the memorials of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have joined them in, shred in shedding the prophets' blood. Thus you bear witness against yourselves, and you are the children of those who murder the prophets. Now fill up what your ancestors measured out. Very tough words, <laughs> our Lord uh, again, continues uh, in this particular gospel to, today to uh, to scold the uh, the Pharisees. Now, let's let's try and understand a little bit. Who are these folks? Who are uh, the scribes and the Pharisees? Right? Uh, what are they really? And why was Jesus so um, well? Uh, um, no, so loving in reprimanding them. Okay. Our Lord, uh, of course, reprimands them out of charity, out of love for them, okay? not because he was just angry for no reason. Right? He wants to straighten them up. He was hoping that these Pharisees and the scribes uh, would, uh, would be the ones to lead the, the rest of the people in, in following Jesus Christ. Right? But who are these men? Who are these men? See, uh, uh, among the Jewish people, among the chosen people of God, the Israelites, right? Um, there, in the course of time, they developed different groups, factions of uh, uh, of people who uh, wanted to understand the laws of God better and who wanted to uh, to try to live it uh, correctly. However, uh, well, they they could not agree with one another and they developed certain factions, certain groups here and there, you know, the Sadducees on one side, who were the priests, of, uh, the, belonged to the priestly class. And then there were the Pharisees and the scribes who were the laymen, okay? They were the laymen. The, the, the Sadducees wanted to interpret God's law strictly according to the Torah, see, the five books uh, uh, of, of the Bible, okay? Uh, but the first five books, but then, the, the Pharisees thought, no, we should interpret it together with Jewish tradition, you know, and we'll, we'll uh, mix the two things and, and uh, because uh, we have to be concerned about how they, they will be applicable in our own tradition. So uh, there was always a constant quarrel between the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Okay? Um, and, and the problem there really is that uh, what, because, because they uh, come from different um, uh, uh, perspectives, right? And they don't agree with each other, and they they end up interpreting things their own way. Okay? And uh, not not only is that by itself already not good, but uh, on the other hand, they start inventing burdens on people and imposing these burdens on people and saying, oh, if you do not wash your hands before you eat, you know, uh, you cannot eat on the table. That's bad, you see. Oh, uh, if you do not wash the cups uh, very well, you know, before. So, <laughs> so many things that were interwoven into the law of God, see, uh, which are all based on just their own interpretations of things, their own interpretations of uh, the law of God. And then, uh, they they impose these burdens on people, 
and uh, they impose punishments on people when they when they do not follow uh, this uh, kinds of um, impositions that are all based on their own way of thinking, just their own way of looking at things. They're not even the things that God himself had sanctioned and had uh, commanded them to do. That is why uh, before the time of Jesus Christ, uh, they, these, these uh, Jews, they ended up having hundreds of commandments, hundreds of laws to, to follow uh, in, their, in the practice of their faith. Right? And so they, they, they got so confused already that you know, several times uh, Jesus had to be asked, well, master, teacher, well, tell us what is really important among all of the hundreds of laws and commandments we have. What's the important thing? See, what are really the most important things? And Jesus has to tell them, right? Well, he simplifies it for them by saying, love God, above all things, love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. He says these are the two greatest commandments. The two greatest commandments. He simplifies everything under the umbrella or the scope of love, which the Pharisees and the, the Sadducees and, and the scribes did not know. In fact, their, their, their law is, you know, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, right? It was extracting, exacting justice to the, to the last... Uh, to the last uh, blood okay so uh, and Jesus changes all of that and says no my law is a law of love okay so uh, plenty of confusion during the time and look look how they turned to our Lord and called him master see teacher what does that tell us they even if they were supposed to be the upper class of society they were supposed to be the leaders of the of the Jewish people they recognized the teaching authority of Jesus Christ. They recognized that Jesus had some authority. They recognized that Jesus was the master. And that is why they called him that way, master, teacher. What is really the most important of these commandments? Right? You know, in the church, in the Catholic church, we are very fortunate that we have what is called the magisterium. Of the Catholic Church the magisterium is the teaching authority of the church we don't have to listen to Pharisees <laughs> who interpret their the, the Bible in their own many different ways right in the Catholic Church we have what's called the magisterium of the church the magisterium is the teaching authority it is the authority vested on the church leaders from the Pope to the bishops who are in unison and in communion with with each other when they teach something of doctrine and of dogma then we have the certainty the certainty given by Jesus Christ himself that this is true and correct that these things they're teaching us are true and correct and in fact infallible meaning free from error Okay? So the things that we believe in, the things that were handed down to us from generation to generation, from the apostles to the fathers of the church, to the doctors of the church, to the councils, right? From the Council of Nicaea to the Council of Trent to the Vatican Councils, uh, Second Vatican Council being the, the latest one. All of these venues and occasions where... The, the, the opportunities where the church um, acting as one, right? The church acting as one in communion with the Pope and the bishops have handed down to us very, uh, very concrete, very specific, uh, um, unadulterated ways of understanding the Gospels, the Word of God and Catholic tradition. Okay? So we are very fortunate that in the church we have that. Okay? It is sad, it is sad to note, and this is just for your understanding, and we have to pray for these people. It is sad to note that our depart I mean our brothers, not our uh, separated brothers, okay, 
those who those who have uh, chosen to break away from the Catholic faith, okay, they and they don't have apostolic succession. They have they don't have a magisterium. They don't have that authority. See, uh, uh, derived from the church's communion and union with the Pope and the bishops. They don't have that. Okay? So many times they interpret the Word of God, the Bible, really, uh, just any which way they want. Okay? And that is why there are as many Protestant denominations as there are pastors who care to interpret the Bible by themselves. Okay? Whereas in the church, there's only one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the Catholic Church, see, which uh, which derives all of its uh, teaching and doctrine and morals uh, from the same magisterium of the church. Now, uh, and that is why. Uh, what, what is the um, what is the application of this for us in our daily lives? Well, the 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 most important. Catholic practice we could we could uh, emphasize today is the need to study our faith. Okay? We need to study our faith. The faith is not going to be lived uh, just by us trying to wing it. Okay, there's no such thing. You see, uh, uh, we are going to be able to live our faith very well if we study it. We have to study it and there's nothing in this world that escapes study right you want to be an engineer you need to study you need to be a doctor you need to study well even if you just need to be a want to be a cook at home we need to study how to cook right just like Sunday we had uh, we had a demonstration here of uh, uh, you know a salad master right and we learn plenty of things and these are things that are necessary even for our own living right to eat well and to cook well. Well, we have to study, right? We have to study how to cook, right? We also have to study uh, gardening if we want to garden properly. We have, what more, our faith. If we want to live our faith well, well, we need to study our faith. Study is part of being able to live our faith properly. Okay? And I'd like to address myself to parents now, to parents um, uh, we have been talking about uh, studying the faith, but you know we have to pay attention to how we are doing it at home. Um, I uh, I am well aware that uh, the default setting of many families is oh there is PSR public uh, what do you call it now Paris School of Religion bring them there enroll them there and forget about it. My job is done. <laughs> no sir, no ma'am. That is wrong. Okay, the parish school of religion is not going to do magic for you. They are not. Uh, uh, why? why uh, they're not going to be your babysitters. They're not going to be the surrogates for your children's Catholic education. You have to do it yourselves. You know, and I cannot help but give the example of my own parents when we were kids. Well, people ask me, where did you learn these things? Well, you know what? <laughs> it started from our own home. Okay? From my own parents. There's six of us in the family. I'm the oldest. Two boys, four girls. And every Sunday, and in our family, this is the way we did it. Every Sunday, my dad would collect the two boys. We'll be in the garage. My mom would get the four girls, stay in the kitchen. And guess what we do? We study the catechism. Point by point by point by point by point. Okay? And what do we do when we say we study the catechism? We memorize the points of the catechism. Memorize. So parents, it, there's really no excuse. You cannot say, oh, I don't know my faith very well. I'm not as educated. I, uh, no, the catechism already has everything for you formulated. All you need to do is memorize. How difficult it is, is it to memorize? Okay, you learn your mathematics the same way. Nobody can do any mathematical formula without memorizing that one plus one equals two. 
and the 2 times 2 equals 4. There are no shortcuts to this. There's no other way to learn it but memorize it. You cannot hope to do algebra and trigonometry later on or whatever kind of physics without knowing that 1 plus 1 is 2. And you had to memorize that. And really, it's a pity how nowadays uh, 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 young high school students don't even know how to do their algebra. Why? Because they don't. Have, they haven't memorized their multiplication table. So, <laughs> if you don't, so if you don't memorize your catechism, forget about Bible study. Forget about all of this advanced way of knowing the faith. You won't benefit from it. You just won't understand anything. And that's very basic logic, law of life, right? Memorization is a way of, is the starting point of anything bigger in the future. So if you don't memorize your catechism, all you're doing in Bible study or all of these other, whatever other programs you have in the parish, all you're doing is wasting your time because you are not, going to absorb as much as you could have if you had learned the basics of your faith through the catechism. Catechism, catechism, catechism. So, following my own parents' example, well, I do it here for my own family. See, we memorize the catechism. You know what? I have this little book here, see? Catechism of the Catholic. I've had this for years, written by a by a, a, a good uh, friend of mine. I happen to know this author. May he rest in peace, Father Guzman, Mar Mar Marcy Guzman. He has died, uh, but he he dedicated his priestly life into writing um, um, uh, abridged uh, versions of the big catechism. You know, Catechism of the Catholic Faith. Here, he, <clears throat> he wrote it for easy reference for us, right? And I still have this. This was way back, and I don't know how many years ago. This was in the 80s, I think. <clears throat> oh, 1995, yeah? But uh, he had earlier versions in the 80s, see? Okay, so what do I do with our family here? Very simple. We memorize one point, one point of the catechism only every day. Now, each one of them of different levels, they all have their books of catechism. But that's all we do, parents. One point a day. They memorize one point a day. For example, <laughs> who is God? God is the all-perfect being, creator and Lord of heaven and earth. Done. Who is God? God is the all-perfect being, creator and Lord of heaven and earth. Done. How difficult is that for you to memorize in a day? See, I've memorized that since I was seven years old. And it's still here. Haven't forgotten it. Why? Because of memory work. Right? Why did God create you? God created me in order to know Him, to love Him, and to serve Him, and to be happy with Him forever in heaven. A first grader can memorize that. Right? And I've done that since I was seven years old. And since seven years old, it's stuck here. Right? Why? Thanks to the simple habit of memorize, memorizing the catechism. So in our family, that's our simple trick. One catechism question a day. And happily, my kids are well advanced in memorizing their catechism. And, uh, you know, and um, it serves them to good purpose. Now, but where do you get your catechism? Hey, very simple. Amazon. Hey. Like, this is a book that my little uh, Mia is using. It's already a battered uh, catechism book because it's been passed on from one, one uh, sibling to another. That's St. Joseph, Baltimore Catechism. And this is the other thing that I use for the more advanced kids. Baltimore Catechism, book one. There are four books of these. This is the beginning part. Look, look how simple. It's very, it's very easy. Okay? Very easy to memorize those points. Okay? And uh, learn it by heart. Learn it by heart. Now, after they have learned this by heart, then if they're ready to advance, if they're ready to, they will start asking questions. They will start asking questions. Now, don't worry, parents, if you cannot answer their questions. Because there's plenty of help. There are many other books that you can use okay, when they start asking questions now about the Eucharist or about, I don't know, what topic, uh, the Mass. Well, they, 
There are other books that you can hand over to them and make them start reading more. If you don't have the, uh, the, the answers, well, the saints, the fathers of the church and, and, and many other authorities in the past have already answered these questions for our children. But you know, folks, it is a good habit for you yourselves to also learn it, right? Because uh, you don't want a situation where your kids are going to ask you questions that you cannot answer, right? So I think for your own good too, for your own good too, I would advise you to invest in reading about the faith, in learning about the faith. And uh, since we're talking about reading and learning about the faith, you know, I have to show the example of how to do this, right? And let me, let me just show you. Eh? I mean, I had invested on books, 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 plenty of books, okay? About the faith, about studying the faith, because we cannot, uh, we have to take this thing seriously. See? We have to take the studying of our faith seriously. You will find there, see, uh, what do you have there? See, all of those books, see, look at all the philosophy books. Uh, look at all the books on, uh, what's that, the Summa Theology, St. Thomas, okay? See, um, those are all the books I had been reading, okay? And uh, they're part of my, my library, okay? You want to learn about the saints? There are the saints, okay? Over there, see? See? All of those, okay? You want to learn about the virtues? There are the books on virtues, see? Okay? The bottom line, folks, the bottom line is we cannot... Uh, we cannot belittle this habit of study. If we want to live our, our faith seriously, we have to invest time and effort in studying the faith. Let us not fall into the same um, uh, temptation of the Pharisees who th thought so highly of themselves, who thought it, uh, they can wing it, right? And they ended up interpreting uh, the loss of God in, in their own ways. And where did it lead them? It led them to a life of hypocrisy, of course, because if it is not uh, in any way faithful to what God wanted us to do, then we will live in a world of uh, hypocrisy. So let us study our faith, folks, so that we'll be able to live it properly and pass it on to the next generations, to our children, faithfully. Okay? And just like little Chevelle here, Hello. <laughs> well, she's still in, she is in kindergarten, but she's trying, pretending, to try to study the catechism herself. Okay? And I would encourage every family, invest in the catechism, begin there, start memorizing, start memorizing. And if you memorize it yourselves, dear parents, then it will be easier to teach your kids. One point a day. How difficult is that? Just one catechism point a day will go a long way to helping you and your children live the faith faithfully. Okay, folks, that's it for us on Catholic Best Practices today. Uh, hope you have a good day. Hope to see you tomorrow. Bye.